Our final project is using linear algebra to solve a system of ordinary differential equations. I will be starting off introducing what is differential equations. A differential equation is an equation relating to some functions and their derivatives. And it can represent a relationship between a metric and its rate of change. They are very useful in various fields of studies such as physics, politics, and economics. Here are some classification of differential equations. So the method to solve a differential equation depends on its characteristics. Here, we are mainly focusing on ordinary, linear, first order differential equations. Let's look at how to solve a first order linear ordinary differential equations. So the equation above is a general form of first order linear ordinary differential equations. And the equation below is a general solution form of first order linear ordinary differential equations. Let's move on to the system of first order linear ordinary differential equations. Just like system of linear equations, system of linear ordinary differential equations can also be expressed using the matrix notation. And here's the representation of it. That brings us two questions. Can we solve this just like how we solve a first order linear ordinary differential equations? And second, if we apply the previous formula, we will get such equations. And for m, what is the e to the negative at power? In other words, what is e to the power of a matrix? We are now left with the problem of calculating e to the power of a matrix. To actually do it, we first need to know a concept called the Jordan normal form, and we need to know how to calculate it for a given matrix. Recall that we can diagonalize a matrix A if all of its eigenvalues have a geometric multiplicity equal to the algebraic multiplicity. For this kind of matrix, we can find a diagonal matrix D, which is a matrix with all its non-zero entries on the main diagonal such that this holds. But there do exist some matrices that are not diagonalizable. We call them defective matrices. For example, here we have a matrix A. It's not diagonalizable because there is an eigenvalue lambda 1 equals 2. Its algebraic multiplicity is 2, you can verify that. But its geometric multiplicity is 1. So A is not diagonalizable. This means we will not be able to find a diagonal matrix D such that this holds. But we can do something pretty close to diagonalization. We can find the Jordan normal form of A, denoted J here, so that this holds. Note that J is not a diagonal matrix, so how is this useful? We'll see that later. But in addition to all these entries, non-zero entries here, we have an additional one. This makes J uh, no longer a diagonal matrix, but it's a valid Jordan normal form. The requirements of the Jordan normal form is not as strict as a diagonal matrix. In addition to the main diagonal, we can have some ones on the diagonal right above it. So here, in this diagonal line, we can have some ones. It does not violate the rules of a Jordan normal form. So how did we get this J? It's pretty simple and straightforward. For a matrix, for example, uh, for a matrix we have several eigenvalues. We have one, we have two ones, and three twos. So this means the algebraic multiplicity of this one is two, and for this two it's three. But we just write them down in in the main diagonal of a five by five matrix. So the original matrix is five by five. Uh, this matrix is also five by five we populate the main diagonal with these eigenvalues and for each pair of equal eigenvalues we add one here on the top right corner for th these twos are equal we add one here these twos are equal we add one here so when we're fin finished we fill all other entries with zero so now we have got the Jordan normal form of a given matrix with eigenvalues 1, 1, 2, 2 and 2 the nice thing about Jordan normal form is that it can be written as the sum of two matrices. One is a diagonal matrix D here, and another is X. X is a nilpotent matrix. It has a nice property that when we multiply it with itself for several times, we eventually get zero. So here the value P happens to equal two. It means X dot X equals zero. This is the zero matrix. 
we can actually leverage this nice property to calculate e to the power of any given matrix. Next, we'll see how to do this. Hi, I'm Ming Jian Mao. I'm going to introduce a method to calculate the exponential of a matrix, which is the essential part of solving systems of ODEs. Let's first recall the definition of the exponential function. Exponential function maps from R to R typically. The exponential of A is equal to the summation of A to the power of K over factorial K from K equal to zero to infinity. So the exponential function for matrices is defined in the same way. Notice that we have to calculate A to the power of K, which requires some technique. As you can see, computing the series directly is impractical. So we will first diagonalize our matrix using the method we have learned in the course. Here, P is the matrix formed by the eigenvectors of A. A is equal to P times D times the inverse of P, where A is raised to the power of K by applying associativity of matrix multiplication. P times the inverse of P is equal to identity matrix. So we are left with P times d to the power of k times the inverse of p. Then we switch the problem from calculating the exponential of a to calculating the exponential of d. d is a diagonal matrix, raising to the power of k resulting in a nice form. The formula is shown here. Again, we use the definition of the exponential function to calculate the exponential of d. We use the definition and take the summation of each diagonal entry, and then we get a result. For now, we are able to calculate the exponential of a diagonalizable matrix. Then what about defective matrices? This is where we need Jordan normal form. It has been introduced by my group member. From the formula below, we need to calculate the exponential of a new potent matrix X. Recall that x to the power of p is equal to zero for some natural number p. So the exponential of x can be easily calculated since it becomes a finite summation of exponential series of x. So for now, we can calculate the exponential of a for any given matrix. The method we use to solve first order linear ODEs can be generalized to systems of ODEs. Now let me hand over to Chen Fan to talk about samples and the application of the method we have introduced. Okay, let's view some examples to see how exactly do we use linear algebra to solve systems of differential equations. Here is an initial value problem with three variables and our task is to find the solution of the system. We can first construct a linear system to transfer equations into the form ax equals to derivative of x. Because the matrix A here is non-diagonalizable, we can use some methods such as top-down or bottom-up to construct transition matrix U with generalized eigenvectors. Then the Jordan matrix can be calculated by inverse U by A by U. Next, we can divide J into matrix D and matrix N and to calculate matrix exponent E to the AT. With matrix exponent and initial values, we can first we can finally get expressions for these three variables. Next is the physical application of circuit. Suppose the following circuit has no charge stored in the two inductors before t equals to zero. Our task is to find expressions for it with three initial values. First, we can write down three physical expressions and eliminate undesired variables to construct a linear system derivative of x equals to ax plus b. For here, the matrix A, A is diagonalizable. The Jordan matrix is constructed by the two eigenvalues. So, using the equations for x and our matrix exponent, we can get solutions of x containing three constants. Then we can use these three initial values to get the final solution to the current. Okay, that's all of our presentations. Thank you very much.